nothing in the world can take the place of persistence. Welcome back to another video, guys. In today's video, we are going to be going over something we have gone over in the past, and that's how to make an arcade vehicle controller. In the past, all right, I called it an arcade cart controller. That was a poor choice of words, as it can drive way more than just a cart. We can see that it uses a sphere to handle the physics of actually driving. We just take the, the vehicle and we match the position of the sphere every single fix update frame. But then all we gotta do is just hide the mesh render on the sphere. And that's pretty cool. The video today is just gonna be a starting point for this controller. It's not gonna be a fully fleshed out vehicle controller. It's just meant to be driven on flat land in the state that it is currently in. If we were to go over slopes, it wouldn't be conforming to the slopes or anything. If it gets flipped on its side or on its head, there's no like auto correction or anything. You're just gonna have to restart the scene. This would be a starting point, but it'd be a really good starting point for your next vehicle controller in your game. But let's get started. We're actually not gonna go through and write the code for this line by line. I've already written all the code. What I'm going to do is make this available on my Patreon and you can go there and download it for free. You can use this however you want for your projects. It's a great starting point for any vehicle controller, especially a, a simple one like this, as you can still add a lot of different features that we're not going to cover in today's video, but maybe we will in future videos if y'all want to see it. But first things first, let me show you how to set up your vehicle in order to work with the controller. Create an empty game object. I want to just call it vehicle parentheses controller reset the position. This is important. We're going to reset the position to zero for both the sphere and the vehicle. Ignore where it puts it. It's going to be clipping through the ground. We're going to ignore that for now. Before I forget, I'm going to add in a vehicle controller. I'm going to set the ground layer that something else we got to go over. You need to create two layers for your project. You need to create a vehicle layer and a ground layer. And before I forget, you also need to go to edit project settings, go to the physics tab and scroll all the way down to your collision matrix. Now find where the vehicle layer meets the vehicle layer, which is right here and make sure that is unchecked because we want our vehicle to not be able to collide with itself because think about it, we're going to have our vehicle following the sphere. It's going to be aligning it to the position of the vehicle to the position of the sphere every single fix update loop. If we're doing that, it means it's going to be colliding. So we need to turn off collisions or else we're going to get some crazy behavior. We want to set our ground layer mask to be ground. Now we need our input action and we need the sphere rigid body. We haven't made the sphere yet, but we have our default input map right here. So let's go ahead and drag it in and we need a sphere rigid body. So we need to make a sphere. So we're just going to right click 3D object sphere. And I like to make it green. So let me go right here and drag it onto my sphere. Before we forget, go back to the sphere, add in a rigid body. We also got to reset it. Remember I said we need the position to be zero. We need it to be exactly the same as our vehicle. Now we go back to our vehicle. We should be able to drag in the sphere right there. Before we parent the sphere to the vehicle, we want to make sure double check that the pivots are lined up exactly in the same spot. So in order to do that, you just look at this little gizmo right here, but don't get confused because I think by default right here up in the top left corner, it's set to be center. So that means it'll move to the very center of the object. We want it to be on the pivot. It just happens to be the exact same as the center for this object, but that's not always the case for every object. Uh, but it should be for this, for just creating an empty game object and then creating a sphere. Make sure they're both reset. And then now pivot does match. I've confirmed that. And then you just drag the sphere as a child of the vehicle controller. And that should be it as far as the basics. Anyways, we obviously are not done yet, but now we can move our vehicle up a little bit to be flush with the ground. And this is another important thing to keep in mind. You don't want to move the sphere. Do not move the sphere. Move the vehicle controller. Move the root game object of your vehicle. And another trick for adjusting this with the ground is don't just grab it and move it. Hold down, if you're on Windows, hold down Control. If you are on Mac, hold down Command. And then 
now click and drag it and it'll move it up in increments and you should just have to move it up two increments and that'll get it perfectly flush with the ground we've got our sphere we need a collider so i like to keep everything separated so i'm going to make another empty game object called colliders and then i'm going to create another empty game object inside that called box collider and of course we're going to add in a box collider they went ahead and made it perfectly around our sphere this should be i believe all that we need to make it drive just don't forget you need to assign on your ground or your terrain whatever it is you're driving on you need to make that part of the ground layer oh and don't forget your sphere needs to be a part of the vehicle layer really we just want everything underneath the vehicle root game object to be a part of the vehicle layer so just go up the layer on the root game object select vehicle it'll say do you want to change the children say yes and i think that's it off the top of my head it should just drive now um obviously we don't have a cart assigned yet i just want to show y'all that the mesh does not matter at all whatsoever for making it work oh yeah we didn't assign the camera and in future videos we'll set up a cinemachine camera that'll be way better but for now we are just going to parent the camera as a child of the vehicle controller looks like i've already got the settings the way i like them there's my settings if you just want to look at them and put them in for yourself but yeah that should get us started let's see and yeah now we got a sphere rolling around we've got a box collider so now it's working so now all we got to do is just find whatever vehicle model we want and just make it a child of the vehicle root game object and then just adjust it to make it look natural and we should be good to go so i'm gonna find my cart should be an art box of mario karts mario i've got a box of mario kart right here that i'm gonna drag into my scene i'm going to i'm not going to reset it because the scale and the rotation are pretty important on this because the person who made this didn't zero everything out which is fine that's what's really cool about this controller is it doesn't matter what the person who made the model did you can make it work because it's just visuals but before we do that like i said i like to keep everything separated so i'm gonna go back to my root game object with my vehicle create another empty and we're gonna call this meshes now i'm just gonna drag oh yeah i got i forgot to zero the position all right actually we're not gonna zero the position because the pivot of this thing's way off. This is a good example for showing y'all the difference between pivot and center. See, look at the center. It, it puts the gizmo in the very center of the object. But if we go to pivot, the pivot's way off on this thing. We gotta zoom way out. There it is. It's all the way over here. So let's say we we're trying to line this up with the pivot of the vehicle controller or the sphere, which we don't need to, but let's say we were, then it would honestly be a nightmare because it's way off. But yeah, we if we were to attempt it, we would need to make sure that pivot was selected up here. But anyways, now we're just gonna drag it as a child of this meshes game object that we created, which is a child of our vehicle controller. But we do need to adjust it some, but it doesn't need to be perfect. Uh, like I said, we don't need to match it up with the pivot or anything. We just need to make it look natural. I actually am gonna select center here so I can see the gizmo again and just drag it up it looks like it's already pretty centered that actually looks good so let's let's test it out it's perfect and again we can just now go to sphere we don't want to disable the whole object we just want to disable the mesh renderer now if we press play we just got our little mario guy here following the sphere letting the sphere do all the work can't even see the sphere we can just see the only reason we can see it is because we got it selected and we got gizmos turned on but seeing it's pretty cool uh, it's really satisfying to watch it roll around see it rotate and just to see how it's interacting with the environment so now let's get into the nitty-gritty fun stuff which is scripting the vehicle controller script is a complex system that works with the physics engine rather than against it we're not going to make a kinematic controller that's going to use rigid bodies and play nice with, with you these physics another cool thing about this is that it uses a state machine so it'll help keep our project nice and clean as we grow and we scale it it just makes it scalable we got our current state and we set that in the start method to be the idle state 
And then the idle state can transition to the drive forward state or the drive backward state and blah, 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 blah. It seems like it's like over engineering right now to do all this stuff or something this simple, but it'll make sense later down the road if we want to add to this. And to me, it makes it easier to hook everything up and get working correctly rather than just cramming it all in one script. This is physics based. We are going to use some custom gravity and drag, but for the most part, we're just going to use rigid bodies in the built in default settings. There are two rigid bodies that we got to get. We have to get the sphere rigid body and we have to get the vehicle rigid body. Sphere rigid body, I just made it where we can assign it in the inspector. It needs to be public though, so we can access it from our state machine scripts. And same with the vehicle rigid body, but we're actually going to grab it in the awake method. So we're not going to worry about having to assign it in the inspector. Then whenever we push up on the input, this will affect the drive forward amount and respectively, it'll do the same thing for all these others based on the, in the input that we give it. It uses a new input system. So there's four actions that we need to make. Again, this will just be a part of the download, but we will take a look at them really quick at our default input map. You can ignore jump and just focus on these first four. We just have drive forward, drive backward, turn left and turn right. And we've got the correct key bindings assigned to each one of these actions. Action type is value and the control type is axis. As we parent the sphere to the vehicle in the beginning, just because it makes it easier to move the vehicle around and stuff. In order for it to work correctly, that sphere does not need to be a child of that root game object because it's just going to follow around the root game object. And we need the opposite. We need it to follow around the sphere. Then we just set the state to be idle. Update, we are handling the input. That just means we are mapping the drive forward amount, backward amount, turn left amount, turn right amount to the respective input values. And then we can use those input values to do all the other stuff we need to do. But we also need to call the update of whatever the current state that we're in. Same for the fix update. We need to do a ground check every fixed frame, but we won't handle turning in a state machine. We actually can put that in this script and we're going to apply force to the sphere. We, we have this motor force variable and that is determining what's going to be applied to the sphere. And so if we press drive forward then the motor force is calculated using the drive forward mount times forward speed. I think you get it. The motor force is what we are updating and is what we'll be checking and using to handle logic in our state machine. But we want the drag on the spirit rigid body to be a little bit different than what it is on the ground. Or maybe we don't, if we don't, then we just set them the same in the inspector. But I found that I like the ground drag to be higher than the air drag. But what's great about this is that you can really tweak it to your liking. You can get the drag exactly how you like it when the vehicle is grounded and you can get it exactly how you like it when the vehicle is in the air. So here, we have apply custom gravity and all this is just applying a force down on our vehicle based on the gravity that we set in the inspector. Got our ground check, which uses a ray cast. In, in the future, we need to introduce a variable right here for this so we can change it in the inspector in case that it is not reaching the ground. Then we got a set state method that we can call from anywhere we made it public we'll be calling this in our state machine to transition to other states let's look at our vehicle state base class and we can see it's an abstract class that means it's not going to implement any logic itself but it's going to pass it on to children of this class and it's going to require children of this class to implement the same stuff virtual means you don't have to implement this but it makes it available for you to overwrite and to get access to whatever logic we put in here. But we will have to do a constructor every single time that we inherit from this, which is what we want. So now let's look at our idle state and we'll say if the vehicle controller drive forward amount is greater than zero. So basically if we're pushing the drive forward input button and the drive 
backward button is not being pressed, then we want to set the state to the drive forward state. Else, if the input for drive forward is not being pressed, but the drive backward is being pressed, then we want to transition to the drive backward state. But if none of those buttons are being pressed, then we just want to drive nowhere. That just means we want to stay in this state and just do nothing. Let's look at the drive nowhere. This is motor force equals zero. And else, if we're not grounded, then we are falling. So we are going to set the state to air idle state. Let's look at the drive forward state. So you can see pretty much all we're doing in these states is just checking for the right input. So if we are pressing forward, and we're not pressing backwards, then we are driving forward. So stay in this state and run the drive forward logic which is just this motor force equals drive forward amount times forward speed else if the drive forward amount is not being pressed but the drive backwards amount is being pressed then we want to set this state to be a drive backwards state else if none of these are true that means neither one of them is being pressed or both of them is being pressed and in that case we want to go back to the idle state so set state idle state else if the vehicle is not grounded again that means we are in the air idle state so we want to set our state to the air idle state we can look at the drive backwards state but this is all getting really repetitive and you see why i didn't really want to go through and write it line by line i think you can figure this out it's just like the drive forward state but just the opposite of it pretty much air idle state it basically just stays exactly how it is until you can ignore this and we can actually get rid of this stuff but yeah, it basically stays the way it is until it's grounded. If it never gets grounded, it's just going to stay in its air idle state. It's going to fall forever. But as soon as it gets grounded, it's going to go to the land state. And I know this is like a little over-engineered with making an air idle in a land state. You could have made this without making a land state in an air idle state. But my reasoning for this was that in case we want to come back in later, let's say we want to come to the land state and we want to add like a land effect like some kind of particle or something, we could just come to the inner and we could put something in, like like we could play dust particle effects when land, which would be here. Or we could play a sound effect. That's my reasoning for really separating this stuff out. And yeah, that's it for covering these states and really just the script and the code in general. If you wanted me to go through line by line and write all this stuff, I do apologize. It's just, it would take way too long and it would probably not work out that well. It would probably be very disorganized and I'd basically be chasing my tail the whole time. Again, go to my Patreon, download this, it's free. Persistence and determination alone.